This video will be a quick discussion about how to convert bitmap images into vectors. And specifically we'll talk about converting a complex character that's using bitmap images into one that uses a vector. This video assumes that you understand the basics of using Anime Studio like importing an image and creating um, vectors with uh, the point tools. But I'm going to show you some tips that I found helpful. So you may already be familiar with the basics of creating a vector and from a bitmap image. And here I've got uh, an image called Head Turns 7 and a vector layer. Now notice I've got the image on top of the vector layer. You of course can do it the other way, but when you're dealing with very complex characters, um, it's easier to put the um, image or the reference on top, and I'll show you why. But before we actually get to the part of creating um, the vector, um, if you're new to Anime Studio, you may want to be aware that creating the styles is really your first step. You can just select the fill and stroke and start creating shapes, but if you're going to create characters, you really want to use the styles because they allow you to make changes uh, in the future very quickly. So for that, the first thing that I'm going to do is turn off the head turns reference layer, the image, just by clicking on the eyes. The next thing that I'm going to do is click on the advanced checkbox within the style window. I want to make sure that style 1 and style 2 are both none, and then I'm going to go to the style dropdown and select new. I'm going to give it a name, like here I'm going to call it skin, and I'm going to select a fill color. Stroke is usually going to be black, but you can change it to whatever you want. So here I have to double click on that, and let me choose something that kind of looks like the skin color, but a little bit darker. And I said OK. Then you want to make sure that the stroke width is set. I have it here as 4. You may want it as 10, but that's up to you. On this monitor, I don't have enough space to uh, show both the advanced and the layers. Um, so I'm going to just go to the layer view. And now I'm going to create a shape. Let's just do a circle here. So in the advanced section, if the thickness is not right, I'm going to click on here and I'm going to use a mouse wheel. And you can change the thickness just by scrolling the mouse wheel till you get it to how you like. Let's set it to 8 for now. Okay, now here's a strange part you want to remember if you're not familiar with styles. You want to now go to style and select none. The next thing that you want to do is set the style number one to the style that you just created, skin. What that will do is that will mean for defaults, if you look under here where it says defaults for new shapes, whenever you create a new shape, it will apply the skin style as style number one. If you have other styles, such as eyes or teeth or shirt or whatever, then you would uh, just select them under that drop down. Now I'm not going to go too much into styles except for to show that what's happening is the style that shows up here is going to be overridden or appended to by this style. Now this might provide a, a strange effect if you're not really familiar with that. If I close the advanced window and I see fill and stroke it looks white and black and now I go and I draw another shape and it has this skin color and I might be confused as to what's going on but what's going on is that that skin is overriding the fill and the stroke and giving us including the width and giving us that skin style. Uh, you'll have to look at some of more uh, style tutorials to understand that a little bit better but let me show you the real advantage if I draw a number of these shapes on the screen what we can do then if we've got those styles is I can go back to the skin style if I wanted to later on and I could change uh, the color and it will immediately apply to all of the items and you can do that for uh, animation as well. <clears throat> the next thing that you want to do is turn down the visibility of the image layer. So I'm going to click on the image layer and then click on this ellipsis and select the opacity and set it, I'm going to set it to about 60. 
if you want to see how that looks you can apply and see if that's enough or uh, you need more but 60 I find is usually good and I'm gonna click on OK now when I go to the layer and I start drawing on the layer I can see uh, the image the vector underneath the bitmap as a reference so you can draw however you want um, you can use circles and then add points if you want uh, click on the add point tool um, or the transform tool here I'm click and select all the but uh, points off now transform that point I can then change the curvature and add some other points if I want and now I've drawn uh, the basic head and the point here is that you can see uh, the image reference very easily and can still easily see all the points in the vector layer so you just turn down the opacity and that's the basic principle that you use for the advanced characters okay so now I'm going to convert this character that I made quite a while ago that is full of bitmap layers and you can see there's just tons of layers here and these are folders that have layers within layers and lots of different things so now I'm going to convert them and the interesting part here just to let you know is I'm not going to actually redraw every single image I'm going to use the newer techniques of Anime Studio Pro 11 uh, where I can control the eyes and the mouth um, with smart bones and masking um, and use that approach so a character that has many many bitmap layers is now going to be easily converted into just a few layers with vectors so how am I going to do that the first thing that I'm going to do is find the base layer that uh, creates this head now in this particular character I don't have a front view so I'm going to go ahead and start with a three-quarter view and I need to find his head now in my particular st setup for this character I actually had a style switch layer that was controlled by a smartphone that allowed you to switch between several different styles of head now remember since this was all bitmap uh, the different styles had to be drawn uh, separately so I'm going to take the one I'm just going to take the style and that's the one that's going to form my base layer because I know it has the head shape in it so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and duplicate that layer I don't really care what it's called um, but I'm going to take that it's called style 2 right now and I'm just going to drag it up to the top and so it's above my whole character now if you have characters like this you may find that these uh, layers sub layers may have been resized and when you drag it up it actually can show up in a very strange place so my head is much larger and out of position so the first thing that I'm going to do is set the center of the layer click on the head and then grab that layer and drag it down to the head zoom in and resize it a little bit now I'm not worrying too much about the exact size because I'll show you how we'll do that in a second that's almost right okay to make sure that I get everything right I'm going to go to the style 2 that I just uh, brought up and expand it and then underneath clip art which is the one that I happen to be looking at I'm going to expand that and I'm going to turn off the expression copy uh, to get the eyes to go away and the head copy if I click off that you'll see that's the head there um, so I'm going to click on that one and like we did earlier I'm just going to change its opacity to 60 and so now you can see as I zoom in that it's much easier I can just go in here make sure I go back to the style too because I want to change the size of the whole layer and it's going to affect all the sub layers underneath it and so I'm going to resize that a little bit and position it so that it's the same as the original style too and it doesn't have to be exact because remember we're creating a vector layer out of here we just want to use it as a reference and so now there you go I've got style 2 in the right uh, size and location and if I turn on the expression copy and the other things you can see that they'll show up appro appropriately so now what I'm going to do is go back to the original style that I had and I'm going to hide it 
and I can hide everything else that I want to hide and turn that um, Uh, style to head back on so that I can see that reference. And now I can just go to my new vector layer. So if, if I haven't created one yet, so I'm going to do one, let's put it above this front reference. This uh, character has lots of different layers I was in the middle of uh, working with, so we can ignore those, but I'm going to create a new vector and call it head. Okay, so this is my new vector layer and I can do my drawing. I've already set up my style and the advanced style is set up properly. And now I can start drawing. I can use the circle and add tools if I want, however I want to do it. And of course once I've done with that I can go up and I can click off the reference layer when I'm done with the entire head of course. Okay now let me talk about a few things that I do uh, to make some of the advanced characters easier, specifically if you wanted to do head turns and things like that. I'm not going to go into details because I've got other tutorials, but um, just the basics. So here for the head, I'm showing the front view. Um, this is the head for this character, and I actually use 21 points for the head. And what I'm doing, they're uh, going to be symmetrical. Um, I'm going to have three points around uh, the eye, actually one just above the eyebrow and three around where the eye is and then around the corner of the chin and four at the bottom. Uh, I have a tutorial that talks about those eye points or rather the head points and the reason that I do this is so that when I do the head turn I have a minimal set of points that will take into account the features that uh, become hidden and unhidden as you turn the head. So for example, as the eye uh, turns, uh, or the head turns, you will see the eye uh, start curvature happening and the uh, jaw curvature will change. So I can use that to set up my um, head turn. I also am showing that I have uh, the nose here and it is uh, kind of strange looking, but uh, I'm going to use kind of a manga style here so that when I'm looking to one side, one edge will show up toward the middle, the bottom may show up, and then to the uh, left, the other side will show up. So I again have a certain minimal set of points to make this easy for the head turns. And one quick uh, point for people that are beginning, if you don't already know this, you can go into display quality and turn off fills. Um, and strokes uh, if you want to see things uh, better. The next thing that I'll show is I'm going to use eyes. For the eyes I'm going to use a masking layer that's going to have eye shapes on one layer and pupils on another layer. And if you'll notice I have the eyebrows on the same layer as the eyes. Now this kind of approach is described in uh, other tutorials so I'm not going to go into details, but let me just show you quickly how this masking works. Okay, so the first thing is I create a layer uh, called eye shape, or uh, whatever you want to call it, but I'm going to call it eye shape, and I'm going to uh, just give it that shape of the outer eye. I'm not going to focus on the drawing, just the principle. Now I'm going to create another layer, and I'll call it pupil, and again I'm going to use my style here for the pupil style and draw a pupil. I'm not explicitly going to make it larger than that eye shape so that you can see the masking. Now what I'm going to do is select both of these layers and group with selection and I'm going to name that eyes. Now all I do is go to the ellipsis and select masking and I'm going to say hide all, apply, and then what I'm going to do is click on the eye shape and say exclude strokes because I do have strokes in my eye. And say okay. And there we go. Now you can see that the pupil is masked. And if I drag that layer around, move it around, now we have the eyeball moving in the eye. So that's what I'm going to do for my eyes here so that I can move them. And they can, the pupils can be very complex with shines and however you want to do them. For the eyebrows, I always use four points. It just makes it easier to create the expressions. 
and again you can see that in another tutorial and you can use that same masking technique for the mouth as well now I don't advocate creating a head turn going all the way from front to side you can do that but when you go from the three-quarter to side you have to deal with all kinds of things like going from two eyes to one eye and things like that so my uh, suggestion is that you use the the new head turns um, for three-quarter to three-quarter but then using that same smart bone when you pull it all the way over then you just switch layers to the side layer so you can see what this looks like in the Jace 2.0 version I have a head a smart bone that uh, just turns his head to three-quarter and then when I get past a certain area I just go right to the side view. That's also in another tutorial about that one. Now let me show you what you can do once you set your character up completely. Um, the tutorial about uh, how to create this kind of uh, eye is in a different tutorial. But I can do the head turn and uh, if I drag a middle bone I can see that it, it moves the eyes uh, and I can move each eye independently so if I want to get a cross-eyed type of effect I can do that um, I can do the stretch and squash eye size uh, I can move the head up and down um, if I want to just insert a particular action to make them closed or sad I can get all of these different uh, types of emotions and they're very easy to even once I've got a sad position I can change it if I want um, easily by just dragging these things to make it a little different look so once I have the vector set up and everything properly arranged it's far more powerful than the bitmaps and so that's why I'd want to switch from the bitmaps to the vector layers one last thing to show uh, that may be uh, seem a little bit strange for beginners um, but I actually have the head separate from the body in my um, more complicated characters. My Jace 2.0 tutorial explains this in a little more detail but specifically I have the head separate from the body that allows me to have the head uh, going in different positions for any of the body styles and I can drag the head so the head is disconnected from the body actually but it's very easy to animate um, so that's the style that I use so I hope that helps you uh, get some tips and hints on um, switching from bitmap uh, characters to vector characters why it's helpful and uh, some approaches you can use